the reason we've gotten rid of Ken for today is because we have a new feature. If you point at the screen, we'll do stupid shit. <laughs> no, don't point there. Point here. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you Lower. doing? Lower. Yes. Slowly. <laughs> Does anyone? There used to be that uh, at E three years ago, in like two thousand and four, when the DS was first uh, coming out, Sega put like a uh, a booth out where they showed their original version of Sonic Rush, and it was a three D Sonic 06 styled Sonic game uh, where you had to rub your finger across the screen in order to make Sonic run. And what was great was the saying, the saying on the screen, like this is exactly what it said: "Rub your finger rhythmically and quickly." <laughs> And someone else had, and someone else wrote like below one of those screenshots like said the actress and the bishop, you know. <laughs> Got her up fast. Faster something like fast. Too slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Princess what was her name? Princess Lisa simulator. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So yes, no in motion control because that's their latest shtick. <laughs> We've been talking basically about how we're in an era where it seems that hardware to them is more important than than software. Whereas the truth is, and you can just look at the sales if you if you really want to see for yourself, software has always been Nintendo's strong point. Even though they tried to pitch their attachments and their hardware gimmicks on us, but that's always been the weird thing about Nintendo, though. It's like when they stick to the stuff that they do over and over and over again, like the Mario series and the Zelda series. You know, they always get you know the best uh, results. But the minute that they say well, maybe we'll try and change this, maybe we'll try and do something new. Hey, Tank. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Other M. <coughs> Exactly, it tends to go really weird. Like Other M, which was Ninja Studio, is also known for Jiggle Physics, Dead or Alive. Whether you love them or hate them, they tend to be met with mixed reviews and mixed feelings. It's like they can't win either way. Either they're doing the same shit over and over again, or they're accused of being too different, of straying from what made them good. Well, to be um, fair, there is a difference between taking a bold step in the new direction with one of their IPs, like, for example, Legend of Zelda. Wind Waker. Yes, yeah, so Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and of course that one was initially met with harsh criticism, but over time people have accepted the game for what it is, and in some people's minds it's the best game of the series. And then there's doing asinine shit with motion controls. Donkey Konga. <laughs> You're sitting there with uh, yes. trying to control Donkey Kong, and it's like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Unnecessary accessories that are supposed to somehow embroil you into the experience because hitting two plastic bungos or waving a uh, plastic controller is just totally tantamount to fighting with a real sword. Yep, and that, that's one that's one big biggest problem with Nintendo's ever since like 1989 when I first got my first one. Um, yes, I'm that old. They've always had this knack for gimmicks that are just so fucking asinine. Like the Game Boy Camera. Anybody remember that one? You have this ultra pixelated piece of shit, and then it has a printer so you can show people all the shitty pictures you've taken with this piece of junk. I mean, there's some innovations that they've made over the years, like uh, the Rumble Pack was probably kind of what helped spearhead the Rumble and most controllers nowadays. You remember this one? The GameCube microphone? Yes, my sister had it. What was it used for? Karaoke Mario simulators? Party 6, and then I believe it was used for like one other game after that. <laughs> for the Wii, there was that... Well, did they ever actually go through with that that finger? No, no, they did oh, not. Got about that. You've, you've just popped that right back in my head again. Stay yeah, the arousal meter. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, have you seen the trailer for We Dare? No. Oh, is that that? Okay. Is that the adult game? Oh yeah. yes, yes. This advert is one of the most hilarious things. Yeah, I remember this seen. one. It's so misjudged. It's so misjudged. <laughs> it's like we <laughs> scream. <laughs> I've ever seen people who look like this play games like this. Honestly. Yeah, no. I, you know, spank your friend's girlfriend with the Wii controller. The the best bit is the flying mini game, which is like yes. you know, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, they might as well go ahead and make a thing called We Fuck. I mean, come on. <laughs> just, just, put away, 
they, they, they already make, they, it's not Nintendo licensed, so they already make like dildos and shit for the Wii, so might as well just go the whole nine yards. Were they thinking of two ways to apply the arousal sensor? The first one was to implement it in like a video game, uh, a horror, sorry, a horror video game, like uh, the Grudge game with the Flash, or like a, you know, a Slender video game. That, that would have been a decent use, I don't know. But the second one, I think, was there, they were planning to release a hentai game on the Wii, and <laughs> of course, yeah, so you can imagine how that would have been utilized, the sensor, I mean. We found I just just read <laughs> one of the top comments on the video I just sent you, and it's great because it says next time on Gang Grumps. <laughs> <laughs> that was priceless. Anyway, um, I had this with my friend once. It was like uh, he came around my house and said, "Do you want to play uh, Dragon Ball Z?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. What have you got it on?" And he said, "I've got it on the Wii." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> So we put it in Dragon Ball Z, and you think, you know, okay, Dragon Ball Z on the Wii, this was when the Wii first came out, I was like, okay, so I imagine that to do a Kamehameha, you put both your hands together, and you splay them out like it is in the show. So I play it, and it's like, in order to perform a Kamehameha, you must turn the remote anti-clockwise while raising it above your head, while putting it behind your back, while placing the nunchuck under your foot, while doing a can cam while flying with a monkey, and it's like... <laughs> Or it could, it could just be the opposite, like the uh, the Mortal Kombat game that they have to Yeah, see. swing that, it that to was... the left and he decapitates a person. If, if you ever see me play in Mortal Kombat, I look like a freaking epileptic. <laughs> so if, if all the special moves are, are like movement-based, I'm fucked. <laughs> There was only one game on the Wii that ever actually utilized any of the hardware, as far as I'm concerned, and that was Zack and Wiki, which was a Capcom game, you know, hand it to Capcom to get it right. Capcom were the only ones who made a game that actually, uh, uh, a point and click game that actually said, well, we can take point and clicks to the next level using the Wii uh, hardware. And no other game since it has bothered to do it. Not even, you know, Telltale stuff. So that that got to be a little bit because that game deserves much more recognition, I think, for what it actually tried to do with what it had. It's no, it's a decent game, yes. But if you're talking about the additions where you use it as a shovel or you know just twist the remote like you're twisting a switch or something, all of this could be done as yeah. easily with a mouse, and it would have been, and it would, I, I feel like it would have felt more natural that way. You suck it up your microphone for a minute there, because we there was a big rubbing noise and while you were talking. Again, I can multitask. <laughs> <laughs> but the Wii U. Here's the thing: the Wii was new technology, and everybody bought it. But I got to tell you guys, I showed you the figures. The Wii U is tanking, bad, like really bad, like virtual. Bad. It's 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 that bad. So here's the problem: is like the the original Wii. The premise was to get people off the couch, get them active. You know, something so easy, even Grandpa can play bowling. And here, the Wii U it looks like it's put your ass back right into the couch. Exactly. Let, well, let's look at it this way. I've got some figures here. Like um, this was quite a while ago, but they said that um, Zavi Online they dropped the price of the Wii U Premium Pack by seventy five pounds. Now let's consider the original price, which was two hundred and ninety to three hundred pounds. So we're looking at about. Uh, 225 pounds 200 and maybe a bit more that is a really low starting price for for a console like the wii u especially one that runs on what's supposedly meant to be the same engine as the uh 360 although if we actually look at the figures the engine specs are more like six wii's you know sticky tape together <laughs> so re more recently in december the uk charts say that nintendo land is the biggest selling exclusive uh which is the 11th all formats charts. However, 60% of the Wii U uh, sold in the UK were premium packs, 30% were Zombie U bundles, 10% were basic, and the Nintendo Land sales are factored in, unlike Wii Sports, which was not tracked because it was uh, um, unavailable from the Wii separately. And New Super Mario Bros. U was 14th and Zombie U was 17th. And they're pretty atrocious figures when you think about it, you know, they're just not... Do, do you know what I'm saying? It's it, That's not what sales should be hitting with a brand new console Especially like the Wii Nintendo. U. And um, I've also shown you the figures where uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii U has dropped from something like uh, 18th in the chart to 36th. Uh, this, no, it's 14th to 36th. Uh, Mario game starts at 14th on the chart. And then goes down to 36th. Jesus. <laughs> 